Yo, what's good? Welcome back to the channel. Alright, so ESPN just posted this clip this morning. Um, and this is just a couple of things in the clip that I wanted to address. I'm going to let the whole thing play just in case you haven't seen it. And then I'll discuss afterwards. Alright. Goes back to Michael Jordan. Jumper from out on the left. Good! The Star Heels win the National Championship! The Chicago Bulls pick Michael Jordan. My own expectations are just to go in and con try to contribute, you know, and uh, don't try to do anything out of the ordinary. Uh -oh. There's a kaboom. Driving all the way in. Oh, God, an unbelievable ball. You know, I was all by myself, so it was time for creation. 63 for Jordan, a new NBA record. Whenever I go against good or great competition, you know, I enjoy that. It makes me become a better basketball player. Dribble now to Jordan. Michael in from the left side, jammed it right over Rollins. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! The Bulls win! They win! I've really set a standard for myself. It's just normal. But then you have to step it up another level to be above normal. Steal. He kept it in bounds. Here it is again. Oh! Yes! Everyone's saying that a scoring leader can't be an NBA champion. I never believed that. I got seven years of it to sink in. You know, it can't sink in in, in just a few hours. It's going to take a while for it to sink in. How hard is it to be Michael Jordan sometimes? Very difficult sometimes. It's a different feeling. It's a different type of pressure to be in front of cameras and to, to act and to do a commercial. At some point in time, I'm going to have to walk away from all this and, and try to get into a normal style of life. Here's Jordan! I surprised him as much as I surprised you and myself with the way I was shooting the ball. And here's Jordan to the open floor. Mike Angela. Whose game is it? It's Michael Jordan's game. I saw so much of that round ball that, you know, I kind of lost the taste for it at that particular time, and I needed a mental break. How long did it take you to miss it? A couple weeks. Oh, and Reggie Miller came over and smacked All right, Michael. okay, and we got a brouhaha here. Jordan, yes! Certainly, destiny shall be back here for the fourth time. Thank you. On August the 5th, 1993, a red Lexus was found in a wooded area. This vehicle belonged to the Mr. James Jordan, father of Michael Jordan. He was shot to death while in his car. We're pretty strong and we're moving forward in, with our lives. And uh, we got a lot of memories to think about. And, uh, you know, we just had to keep forward. A shocking revelation tonight for all Chicagoans. Bull star Michael Jordan will announce his retirement tomorrow. I achieved practically everything I could from an individual standpoint and from a team standpoint. And it really made it easy to walk away while you was on top. Will I ever unretire? I don't know. Hey, Mike, get out of here, baby. A lot of people may think it's off the wall. Maybe it is. The White Sox will let me know if they feel that I'm not, I'm not doing well. Michael Jordan is returning. He released a press release today that said, quote, I'm back. At the time that I retired, I didn't have anything to prove. Now I got something to prove. Are you as good now as you were when you left? I'm better. The 5.5 Michael Jordan. The Bulls have won 70. Bulls are the champions of the world. Oh, an emotional moment for Michael Jordan. I know he's watching. This is my daddy. I'm very happy for him. I truly have a newfound love for the game of basketball. The big story here tonight, Michael Jordan's physical conditions. He is suffering from flu-like symptoms. I really felt like I was on deathbed. Bulls are going to win the NBA championship again. The drive for five. That's the biggest bottle of champagne you've had so far in all the other finals. I mean, that's... Uh, when we get six, it's going to be bigger. 
A lot of people question some of the things that I can do now or people don't know if I could do. That's the beauty of the creator is that you don't know until it's done. All right, it's win or lose. Game six for the Bulls. Ten seconds. Jordan, 24, ahead of the key. Good! The Chicago Bulls have won their sixth NBA championship. We do this again for the second time. I am here to announce my retirement from the game of basketball. And a lot of people say, well, Michael Jordan didn't have any challenges away from the game of basketball. Well, I dispute that. This is a different challenge for me. Basketball has been my life, so this is an easy transition for me. Last time we saw you on the court in 98, that night, that shot, did you have any idea then that that would be the last time you played? Uh, I was pretty sure of it. It's a little bit different. I'm 38 years old, but I feel like I can play the game of basketball at the highest level. When I then got 20 right off the bat, and then sort of petered out. That's a good way of putting it, petered out. <laughs> well, you got tired. Just, just say I got tired. You know, but the thing about it is my love for the game is strong as ever. Seconds remaining. Michael has the ball. The fadeaway. Yes! There's 28 games left in your career. How do you look at that? Not much time. There's the end of a legendary career. Michael, it's been an honor to call your games and a privilege to watch you play. Now I guess it, it hits me that you know, I'm not going to be in a uniform anymore. And that's not a terrible feeling. It's something that I've come to grips with and it's time. Time. Six rings, ten scoring titles, five MVPs, all defense nine times. Did I leave anything out? Two Olympic gold medals. <laughs> One word to sum up your career. Fun. Goes back to Michael Jordan, jumper from out on the left. Good! Michael Jordan. My own expectations are just to go in and try to contribute, you know, and uh, don't try to do anything out of the ordinary. Uh -oh. There's a kaboom. <clears throat> Driving all the way in. Oh, God, an unbelievable ball. You know, I was all by myself, so it was time for creation. 16-3 for Jordan, a new NBA record. Whenever I go against good or great competition, you know, I enjoy that. It makes me become a better basketball player. Dribble now to Jordan. Michael in for the left side. Jammed it right over Rollins. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! The Bulls win! They win! I've really set a standard for myself. It's just normal. But then you have to step it up another level to be above normal. Steal. He kept it in bounds. Here it is again. Oh! Yes! Everyone's saying that a scoring leader can't be an NBA champion. I never believed that. That's right. Um, so before I even address that, like, I, after I watched this the first time, um, I, I said to myself, I don't know how anyone, <laughs> anyone in their right mind and who actually has reasonable knowledge of, uh, Michael Jordan's exploits as a player could say that LeBron is better than him. Like, I, I just, I had, like, you, there's no logic or rationale behind such a, such an opinion. It's literally just, you, you have to be a fanboy. You have to be a LeBron fanboy to believe that. Because there's, there's, there's no facts or empirical data that could back such an assertion. Um, but anyway, as Mike just said, um, that was a big thing you know, at that time. Because I think it was going back to the 70s that uh, was the last player who was, um, like, played a major role on a championship team, led the league in scoring. So that was one of the knocks against him because obviously he started, he, the first scoring title he won was the 87 season, and that was a few years before they were able to win the title. So that during those years, as they were building the team up, he was still leading the league in scoring. Um, that was one of those knocks like, oh, well, can a, can a scoring leader lead a team to a championship? That was one of those things. Um, I mean, one of the knocks, some of you I might have heard of before, that he was basically George Gervin, meaning you know, he scored a lot of points, but your team doesn't win. So that was one of those those early knocks before they were actually, like, one of those early knocks against Mike before he was actually able to, to win that first title. And the Chicago Bulls have won their first ever NBA championship. 
I got seven years of it to sink in. You know, and it can't sink in, in in just a few hours. It's gonna take a while for it to sink in. How hard is it to be Michael Jordan sometimes? It's very difficult sometimes. It's a different feeling. It's a different type of pressure to be in front of cameras and to, to act and to do a commercial. At some point in time, I'm gonna have to walk away from all this and, and try to get into a normal style of life. Here's I surprised them as much as I surprised you and myself with the way I was shooting the ball. And here's Jordan to the open floor. Mike Angela. Whose game is it? It's Michael Jordan's game. I saw so much of that round ball that, you know, I kind of lost the taste for it at that particular time, and I needed a mental break. How long did it take you to miss it? A couple weeks. Oh, and Reggie Miller came over and smacked All right, Michael okay, and we got a brouhaha here. <laughs> That's always one of my favorite clips. Mike was about to scrape Reggie's eyes out. <laughs> Jordan, yes! The Bulls win the championship! Certainly, Destiny shall be back here for the fourth time. Thank you. Now, you know, he said that as if to suggest Destiny was going to be there for the fourth time the next season. But, you know... I don't know, because in, in, in Mike's book, I think uh, Driven From Within, which was like from the mid-2000s, he, it states in there that he, he knew before that game, that uh, that last game in Phoenix, that he was going to retire. That he was telling all, like, all his family and his friends, you know, that this is it, this is it. So the fact afterward that he would say something like that, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Like maybe <laughs> I firmly believe what well, well, he said, that he already knew he was going to retire in the book. But the book obviously was 2005, that was 1993, so he couldn't have been telling the truth both times. So one of those times he had to be, you know, being disingenuous about the first retirement. On August the 5th, 1993, a red Lexus was found in a wooded area. This vehicle belonged to the Mr. James Jordan, father of Michael Jordan. He was shot to death while in his car. We're pretty strong and we're moving forward in, with our lives and uh, we got a lot of memories to think about and uh, you know, we just had to keep forward. A shocking revelation tonight for all Chicagoans. Bull star Michael Jordan will announce his retirement tomorrow. I achieved practically everything I could from an individual standpoint and from a team standpoint. And it really made it easy to walk away while you was on top. Will I ever unretire? I don't know. Uh, you know, I believe him right there uh, about unretiring. That he that at that moment he probably wasn't didn't think that he would um, come back, um, but he wasn't closing the door because he knew it was a possibility. Sure, he, now there's a possibility he could come back, but at that moment, if you were to ask me, I th I would say he he wasn't intending, he wasn't planning to come back. Hey, Mike, get out of here, baby. A lot of people may think it's off the wall. Maybe it is. The White Sox will let me know if they feel that I'm not, I'm not doing well. Michael Jordan is returning. He released a press release today that said, quote, I'm back. At the time that I retired, I didn't have anything to prove. Now I got something to prove. Are you as good now as you were when you left? I'm better. The 5.5 Michael Jordan. The Bulls have won 70. Bulls are the champions of the world. Uh -oh. An emotional moment for Michael Jordan. I know he's watching. This is for daddy. You know that, that fourth title on Father's Day and then seeing Mike in the, in the locker room like that, that stands out, you know, as a, a favorite moment for a lot of people because... You know, like people like Mike, they they or fans put them on such a high pedestal, it almost like they get deified. So you know, when you see him crying like that, that you know humanizes that humanizes someone that you know most people have up on a pedestal. So I think that's why you know that resonates with a lot of people um, when you know you, you see someone who is so high up yet they're they're human, you know, just like all of us. I'm very happy for you. I truly have a newfound love for the game of basketball. Here's Jordan. Yes! It is all over. 
The big story here tonight, Michael Jordan's physical conditions. He is suffering from flu-like symptoms. I really felt like I was on death bed. Bulls are going to win the NBA championship again. The drive for five. That's the biggest bottle of champagne you've had so far in all the other finals. I mean, uh, when we get six, it's going to be bigger. A lot of people question some of the things that I can do now or people don't know if I could do. That's the beauty of the creator is that you don't know until it's done. All right, it's win or lose. Game six for the Bulls. Ten seconds. Jordan, 20-footer, head of the key. Good! The Chicago Bulls have won their sixth NBA championship. We do this again for the second time. I am here to announce my retirement from the game of basketball. And a lot of people say, well, Michael Jordan didn't have any challenges away from the game of basketball. Well, I dispute that. You know what? That second retirement, I don't care what anybody says. He, he didn't want to retire. He didn't want to retire. He was basically forced out by the Bulls management because they wouldn't bring Phil Jackson back. Um, and I guess, I mean, obviously Phil might have played a role in that. I don't know if there was anything that they wanted Phil to do in order for, you know, him to stay or Phil himself just had enough because Phil remember Phil didn't you know he didn't retire when Mike did the first time so you know he was coaching straight through going back you know to the 1990 season so he didn't really get a break per se um but yeah you could tell and because that was the lock that was the lockout season and you know he could have retired at any point but he waited so, because I think that season started like the first week of February, something like that, mid mid February. When well, you guys can correct me in the comments, but he waited till January to retire. Clearly, he was hoping, you know, hoping against hope, essentially that somehow, some way, things could work themselves out, um, and they could, and you know, the team could stay together. He'd end up playing, but once that didn't happen, he basically had no choice but to retire. But I can, you can tell, and obviously we know now, you know, because he came back and played for the Wizards. He still. There was just still an itch that he wanted to scratch. And, you know, with guys like this, like, they have that, that warrior's mentality. And a lot of time, that warrior, they, they, want, they don't want to go out on top. They actually want to go out, you know, uh, uh, on their sword. And they want that, that closure of defeat, to be honest. So I think those two Wizards years, they did a lot. They gave Mike closure for his career, you know. This is a different challenge for me. Basketball's been my life, so this is an easy transition for me. Last time we saw you on the court in 98, that night, that shot, did you have any idea then that that would be the last time you, you play? Uh, I was pretty sure of it. It's a little bit different. I'm 38 years old, but I feel like I can play the game of basketball at the highest level. Went out there and got 20 right off the bat, and then sort of petered out. That's a good way of putting it, petered out. <laughs> you got tired. Just, just say I got tired. Yeah, but the thing about it is my love for the game is as strong as ever. Look at Jordan stealing off the glass. Jordan the jumper. Got it. You got it at the bottom. Ten seconds remaining. Michael has the ball. The fadeaway. Yes! There's 28 games left in your career. How do you look at that? Not much time. There's the end of a legendary career. Michael, it's been an honor to call your games and a privilege to watch you play. Now I guess it, it hits me that you know, I'm not going to be in a uniform anymore. And that's not a terrible feeling. It's something that I've come to grips with and it's time. You know, it's time. Six rings, ten scoring titles, five MVPs, all defense nine times. Do I leave anything out? Two Olympic gold medals. <laughs> One word to sum up your career. Fun. You know, one thing that skipped over was after that Wizards tenure, part of the, I mean, when you when you go back and you investigate, part of that Wizards deal with him playing was when he was finished playing, he was supposed to get an ownership stake in the, uh, in the Washington franchise. And then Abe Poland backed out of the deal uh, and basically said, nah, kick rocks, bro. So that, that's really what happened there. And a lot of it, and I think um, there was also like a backdoor conversation with David Stern because if you go and check the ratings, the NBA ratings were kind of suffering post-98 finals, that in-between time, um, while they were trying to get you know Shaq and Kobe to build up, so on and so forth, AI, and they were trying to fill that gap and get things back where they were. Um, 
And if you notice, like Mike came back one because it was going to help the ratings, and it was right to the lead up of LeBron entering the league from, and you know, you know that was going to have a ratings jump as well. So I think that did play a role in it as well. What do you think? Uh, do, do I know what I'm talking about, or, or do I, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about? <laughs> Do you agree, or do I not know what the hell I'm talking about? Let me know down in the comments. Um, if you've gotten this far in the video, thanks for watching the video. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for subbing if you have. If you have not, go ahead and tap that red sub button for the kid. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Have a good one. Have a good one. Have a good one. He no longer needs accomplishments to prove his case as the greatest player in NBA history. He just adds to it. And if this is the final chapter, what a way to close the book.